Previously, we discussed the concept of blood pressure and we said that inside arteries we have a much higher blood pressure than inside our veins and this is because of a difference in structure of the two different types of blood vessels. Now, blood pressure is not the only measurement that we can use to describe the properties and the behavior of the different types of blood vessels. We can also use a measurement known as compliance to describe the behavior and properties of blood vessels. So let's begin by defining what compliance is. So compliance, loosely speaking, describes how easy it is to actually expand a given blood vessel. So if we take a blood vessel and we try to expand that blood vessel by increasing its cross-sectional area, and if that blood vessel is able to resist it and recoil back into its original position, then in this case we say that the blood vessel has a low compliance. On the other hand, if by trying to expand that blood vessel, the blood vessel remains in that expanded state and doesn't recoil back into place, well in this case we say the blood vessel has a high compliance. So high compliance means we have to apply a low pressure to expand it, but low compliance means we have to apply a high pressure to expand it even by a tiny amount. Amount. Now let's discuss arteries. So let's recall that the structure of arteries consists of three different layers. And for arteries, the middle layer known as the tunica media contains a thick layer of smooth muscle. And as a result of this thick layer of smooth muscle, it gives arteries the ability to recoil when we actually try to expand them. So what this means is when the blood actually flows through these arteries and when the blood applies a force and a pressure on the walls of those arteries as a result of that smooth muscle, the walls can exert a force back on that blood and resist that expansion. So that is what we mean by recoiling back into place. So once again, arteries have a thick layer of smooth muscle which gives them the ability to recoil during expansion. This means that when the blood pushes against the walls of these arteries, they can push right back. Therefore, when the blood fills these arteries and it tries to expand them, the expansion doesn't actually take place or it takes place but only a very small percentage of expansion actually takes place. So, for relatively large arteries such as our femoral artery, the femoral artery, it only expands by about 10%. So in diagram A, we have the relaxed state of our artery and no blood actually flows across. But when blood actually fills the arteries, the fluid, the blood pushes against the walls, but the walls push right back and so it expands only by a tiny amount and that means that arteries have a low compliance. A very, very high force is actually needed, a very high pressure is needed to actually expand our arteries. So arteries can withstand high pressures without increasing in volume by too much, meaning they have a low compliance. Now, what about veins? Well, recall that veins have a slightly different structure. They also consist of the same three layers, but the tunica media in veins is relatively thin and that's because they have a thin layer of smooth muscle and that's exactly why veins behave slightly differently. They have different properties. So what happens when blood actually enters our veins? Well, when blood flows through our veins, the blood exerts a pressure on the walls of the veins, but the walls of the veins cannot actually push back the same way that the arteries can. And that's exactly why when the blood flows through the veins, that increases the volume of our vein and the veins can actually push back, they cannot recoil back, and so we say that veins have a high compliance. 
So veins behave very differently than arteries. When they experience blood flow, the blood pushes on the walls, but the walls cannot actually push back as well. And so what happens is this increases and expands the cross sectional area of our vein and therefore increases the amount of volume that can pass uh, along that given vein. It also ensures that there isn't a buildup of pressure within our veins and that's exactly why in arteries we have a high pressure because the walls can easily push back but in veins the walls cannot push back so we have expansion taking place and the pressure remains at a relatively low value so in a we have a relaxed vein but in this diagram let's call it b when the blood flows it easily pushes against it expands but the walls cannot push back and so it remains expanded and the volume increases in this case we have an increase by 10% in this case we can have an increase by let's say 200% so it doubles in its size and as a result our veins can actually store much more of the blood volume than our arteries can now this is a qualitative discussion what about a quantitative discussion is there a formula that describes the compliance of our blood vessels and the answer is yes so this is basically a linear equation that describes our compliance where c is the compliance of that given blood vessel the change in volume is by how much volume it increases and delta p is basically the change in pressure the difference in pressure between the inside portion of the blood vessel and the outside portion of our blood vessel so if we change around this equation and if we bring the delta p to this side we get a linear function we get delta v is equal to the product of c multiplied by delta p and we can easily plot this equation on the x y plot so let's take a look at what that actually looks like so let's plot this for arteries so the y-axis is the relative increase in volume given to us in percentage where 100 percent uh, basically means the blood vessel is fully relaxed it contains 100 percent of that blood so our x-axis describes the pressure in millimeters of mercury so we have 50 100 150 200 and so forth now the line the slope of this line designates our value for our c which is the compliance so if we bring this over to this side the c will basically describe our compliance and the higher the slope is the greater the value of c compliance is now this is the same exact graph except here we're using our veins and right away notice that the slope for our artery is much lower than the slope of our uh, vein why is that well that's because we have to apply a very high pressure to actually increase the volume of our artery but in the case of our vein we can apply a time pressure to actually increase the volume because they can't actually push back on that blood very well so for arteries the slope is small as shown here and so that means compliancy is small as well and that means that they can resist high pressures without actually really increasing in volume by that much on the other hand a very tiny change in pressure if we even apply the slightest pressure to our veins they will easily expand by a great percentage so even a small uh, application let's say 25 millimeters of mercury will increase it by about 4 hundred percent versus in this case a 25 percent increase in pressure does not actually increase it by that uh by that much so 
For veins, the slope is very large, the compliance is large, and that means that they change in volume even when there is a tiny change in our pressure. And this means we can expand them very well, we can distend them very well. Distend simply means expand, and so that's exactly why in our body veins are used to store a lot of that blood. So veins store much more of that blood volume than do our arteries for this specific reason. So arteries have a low compliance, they can easily resist and recoil while our veins do not easily resist and recoil and that means we can easily expand them and so they have a high compliance. For arteries, the slope is low because our compliance is low, but for veins, the, the slope is much higher because the compliance is much higher.